Navis turn to ban. Fanatics turn to ban. Navis turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Centaur War Runner. Fanatics turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Triant Protector. Everybody and welcome Fanatics to the Dota 2 Champions to League matches for tonight. We're going to be starting off with a great match, man. We have Na'Vi facing up against Fnatic in a two-game series. I couldn't be happier to start out this great night of Dota. Uh, we just got done earlier this morning finishing up uh, some of the ESL Chinese qualifiers. Uh, we're going to be doing even more tomorrow morning. So it's been a long day, but I am pumped because we got some of the best Dota you can cast, man. Na'Vi versus Fnatic. Navi and uh, honestly... Two of, my, two of my favorite Western teams to watch and should be some damn entertaining games. What's even better, though, is that I'm not going to be alone. I'm going to be joined by a co-caster. It's going to be my good friend, Mr. Rio Burrows, formerly of Team Ehog, is going to be joining me on the mic. What's How's going on, it going, Cap? Welcome to the uh, midday show. It's kind of, I guess it's what time? About five your time? It um, is 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Yep. All right. So it's 11 here. Five I'm, seconds uh, remaining. been up for a little bit. It's been a long day know. for you, too. You, you joined Toby uh, for some of those matches early time. this morning. I know. It's been a day. <laughs> it's been a long day. We'll start with that. And we'll transition into the game maybe one day. Well, one day. Yeah, well, it's transitioning right now, man. We got uh, a lot of bands to talk about. Batrider, Lycan, Wisp, as well as the Invoker, all being banned away. Uh, most notably, out of those uh, four bands, heroes that are missing, Centaur, Train Protector, and possibly even the Ember Spirit, though he's certainly fallen off for many, pe many, many teams. Uh, no surprise, though, Navi, they pick up the Centaur first pick, while Fnatic run with uh, pretty Navi much two of the highest pick supports here that I think uh, in this current meta. Train Protector and Dazzle both going the way of Fnatic, while Marana is going to be the other pickup here from Navi. Standard picks starting off the game. Centaurs, not much to say. I, I, like, I like Tree a lot in these patches, and I think Tree Fnatic can negate a lot that Centaur bad. does. So we'll have to see what it does, if it does enough. D do you know if Dini plays Marana mid? I don't think he does. I think only Havos does. Yeah, most of the time we're seeing Havost on that Marana pickup, so it should be a one unless Navi change it up, but uh, you're right. Nine, nine times out of ten, we're, we're always pretty much seeing uh, Havost is going to be on that, that Marana, so that's what it should be. And I'm feeling Navi, they're, they're wanting to be real aggressive here, and unfortunately, they're going to be going into two of the toughest, toughest support heroes to, to go aggressive against, which is ten the Train Protector, remaining. like you said, negates a lot of what Centaur does with Living Armor as well as Leech Seed, uh, not to mention over growth as well Fnatic is going to be a pretty decent to soft bad. counter to the centaur ultimate um, at the right times you could just completely uh, negate it out and then of course dazzle Fnatic with the shallow grave can pick. have some clutch ass save saves and uh, shadow wave as well as we both being very very powerful abilities in the early to mid game now we're going to see some extra bands coming out ancient apparition and rubik banned away by Fnatic. so take it away uh, some of the strongest support surprised they didn't take away the shattered demon though um Considering that they can't go for an extra support here, and I'm sure Navi would love to have a Shadow pick. Demon to set up that Marana Arrow. 
Uh, we're going to see the Tuskar as well as the Slark banned away by Na'Vi. Interesting that they banned away the Tuskar, uh, seeing as they ran it earlier not too long ago, but uh, they did run it as a offlane hero, and they already have the Centaur, so... Guess it makes a little bit of sense, but Fnatic, though, they're going to go a little big here. They're going to go for an axe as their third pick. I'm liking the axe, but uh, like you were going, I was going to talk about the Tuskar, too. I think mm -hmm. Tuskar is one of those heroes that Five can uh, do really well against Mirana. You leap away, and then you just can follow her. Centaur is pretty good just Reserve to stop. Time. I think that hero is going to be picked up a lot more. Good thing. I, I like seeing it banned by Na'Vi, and... To mention the Wisp, Wisp has actually been seeing a resurgence, so I think Wisp being first banned is uh, going to be a new thing, and I think it's going to stick around for a while, just because of either the map control, but to counter this axe, what can Na'Vi do? I don't think a Shadow Demon, a Shadow Demon is a good hero, but it doesn't take, it's it's not good enough. It, it doesn't take away the instances of the tree armor, mm -hmm. and it doesn't help with Dazzle Hill, and it doesn't help with Axe's tankiness, so they need a, a support hero that can... Burn through the charges. Maybe a less track, but less track's still kind of weak. Mm -hmm. um, what else is there? What if they What if they go for um, What if they go for something like a less track core? Huh? Huh? Saw that a couple times being run by uh, by Fnatic actually. They turned around in there. Their Fnatic's only match in the D2 CL Season 3 so far has been up against Empire. And they tied that series. Um, and I got to cast it. They tied that series up with Empire. And both teams, Empire picked up the Lashrak core first. And then Fnatic, Game 2, turned it around on Empire and decided, you know what, that was pretty damn strong. We'll, we'll try Lashrak core for ourselves. So, you know, that's, that's just something that maybe Na'Vi could think about here. Instead, they're going to go for the Vengeful Spirit. So they, they do agree seconds, with you that maybe Shadow Demon is not going to be the strong. I'm, I'm still confident. I, I know what you mean, like, remaining. just the Shadow Demon up against the Train Protector and the Dazzle. It, it's not strong enough. I get Reserve that. But time. at the same time, it's such good setup for not only the Marana, but also the Centaur as well. I, I don't know. I, I can't take the Shadow Demon away when I have both of those heroes on my team. I'm not seeing the usefulness of Venge and whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what a fun oh. hero that is. I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> that he hasn't been picked up more. He's been picked up, I've seen him played once maybe with Toby. It was uh, Alliance, they picked him with Abaddon offlane. And yep. I think Huskar can definitely punish people if you have a Dazzle plus a tree in uh, Fnatic. They just want to roll over people. Mm -hmm. Just like face this, uh, this balls to the wall, that's a uh, run at you. Yeah, so, you know, I, um, I hate you, but that's, that's all right. All right. Go ahead and Five ask me why. Seconds remaining. Um, why do you love me? I hate you because that match was not Reserve casted with Toby. Time. That was with me. Oh my you god! Dick. Oh, really? It was you. you? <laughs> it was with me. Yes. The the, the they ran. Uh, it Netflix. was yeah. Turn they just got trashed on. It was like all of a sudden the Huskar last pick, and they're like, "What do we do against this dual lane? It's going to destroy us." And sure enough, that's exactly what it did. The uh, Abaddon Huskar lane was was way too strong. But here it, it it's uh, not going to be seen as a secondary Ten carry seconds. here. Uh, certainly going to be in that one position. I don't know, can Huskar really do... Do you think you would prioritize him for a mid-roll? turn to ban. A mid-roll? If you have a tree, anything is possible. But mm. if you're doing... If they roam on him, he's going to be completely shut down and his recovery farm is complete crap, Ten to say the least. Then. <laughs> and uh, you'd have to be doing... Ancient stacking or some, something with remaining. the Mask of Madness. I, I do, or well not Mask of Madness, or just a Mask. But I do like the change with the Huskar and the, Us, and the Ursa. Flaming, the Flaming Arrows you can talk about. Now Five you can get Lifesteal. Everybody gets a Helm of the Dominator now. They rush that. Mm -hmm. So I'm Fanatics not liking Navi's to lineup to deal with Fanatics run at you. Drow is actually kind of good if you silence him. Actually, uh, wait. What if Huskar ulties does the in silence and then Drow uses silence mid animation? Does um, it cancel? I don't think it should cancel. Yeah, I don't think it should either. It's just a pushback, in which case, like Huskar just should should just charge right through that that little gust of Ten wind. Uh, that that's how I would see it going down. Maybe there the if it did Five if it did stop remaining. that leap, it'd be great. Like Drow, one hundred percent. This is awesome. But a Drow Ranger feels Reserve like a, time. 
but a bad pickup at the same time. Like in in the wrong scenario, Drown Ranger is just going to be food because Huskar has that leap in to be able to get nice and close Navi to a Drown Ranger, and that's the last thing you want to see. At the same time, Drown Ranger is just like pure physical damage, which is exactly what you want up against a Huskar. Not only that, but adding to everyone else's. Uh, physical damage and then on top of that we already have the magical spirit so you got some synergy there that everybody's getting giving, getting a lot of physical damage here and we could see some fast towers going down because of that but man this ma this match just given so much man Ten i was so psyched for fanatic versus navi but now we got even more medusa for fanatic what in the hell i have no idea what's going on <laughs> it must be New meta. It, it must be I haven't waken up and my eyes aren't open. And finally, I get to see the hero that said would maybe make a sense. Yeah. Lena. Lena's back. Flame Maiden. I don't know. I, I, I like Lena in this lineup. They have a lot of stuns. They have Venge to set up stuns. They have Centaur to set up stuns. And they needed a burst hero Prepare to counteract all this tankiness. So Lion or Lena. Really good heroes in this situation, and I'm... Well, the bad thing is, now they can't uh, aggressive tri-lane, so... Mm -hmm. ah, and it's Dendi on bottom mid, so you're wrong. You're wrong. I am. I am completely wrong. So I'm interested to see watching uh, Dendi play that. Uh, Havos right now is centering himself for that mid position right now on the Drow. So yeah, they're about to tr swap heroes. These trolls. Yeah, this is. Right, uh, I'm calling it. I'm calling it the swapping. <laughs> can you they're, even they're swap swapping. this late? No. Yes, you can. You can? How late? You can swap. You can swap on. You can swap before. Uh, the second one second before the game starts. I think. Oh, really? It's the horn blows is when you can officially no longer swap. Well, yeah, it's That's either crazy. ten seconds or one second, like you said. Uh, huh. One of the two. We should we should have somebody clarify that for us. Uh, well, day. while we see the uh, lanes just kind of panning out here, let's go ahead real quickly cover who's playing what on uh, the top lane. We got the Centaur. Funnick's going to be uh, playing that big old guy. We got Havos in the middle lane for now. We'll see whether or not that stays, but uh, he's going to be playing that Drown Ranger. Kuro is going to be on the Lina, possibly the helping begins. out the uh, the Drown Ranger in just the beginning of the match. We'll see uh where she ends up moving to. They should have a pretty decent ganking squad, though, with Puppy on the Vengeful Spirit, so they got that nice stun-stun combo, and that leaves Dendi, who's going to be playing the Marana in their defensive tri-lane, but it's one hell of an aggressive defensive tri-lane, if you feel me, man. That is uh, a ton of killing power between those three heroes. And they're setting up the quad lane, which I saw yesterday on the mid. Centaur's is going up there. I like what Axe, Axe is doing. He's not going to get anything in this offlane, but if he's not in the offlane, then that means that they're going to get pressured probably mid. Hani's got to be careful. It's easier to gank the dire side. That's why you can see this Drown Ranger might be paying off uh, this game going middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is certainly... I mean, the last thing I would have expected here was that we were going to see a, a Medusa pickup. I think I've only seen one Medusa in the 8-1 patch, and it did not fare well at all. In fact, I believe it was the hands of Na'Vi, and uh, it just did not work out for them at all. I can't say I've seen much success out of the uh, Dusa in any of the previous patches since some of the workarounds, so a little bit surprised that we're seeing it, especially in that mid roll. Um, I really wonder how Hani's going to be playing this one. Uh, he already going in for an early level of Mana Shield, uh, especially knowing the fact that you've got such a uh, harassive, uh, potentially roaming combo of Puppy and Curl on that VS and the Lina. So I can understand getting a little bit defense here, but I'm interested to see what his build is by like level eight, what, he, what he's really going to be prioritizing here. We do have uh, Funix just playing pretty defensive and it looks like we're not gonna be seeing much action just yet and just pulls and passive farming on all sides. So since we didn't get the chance, let's go ahead and cover Fnatic real quickly. Fly's gonna be on the Dazzle, and that leaves no tail, aka Big Daddy, is gonna be on the Tree and Protector. That's rather fitting. Uh, Air is gonna be playing that Huskar and harassing Funic out as much as humanly possible. That leaves Trixie in the jungle as the Axe, and Hani is going to be on that mid Medusa. Dyer's Towers being pressured bottom lane, fortified. first fortify of the game, Dyer's going up for Fnatic, and X is going to be rotating, they've also got Fly rotating, they should be able to hold this, but it's going to be a lot of damage, they'll get some levels from this, so it's not completely uh, useless, and uh, Funic now, he's going to get a lot more space, so he's got level 2 now, that's about it. 
Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't pop the uh, the Drought Ranger active there when they were pushing the creeps and uh, they were beating on the tower like that. But that, that is going to be a significant factor. If they leave this lane alone, the towers are going to drop real quickly, especially once Venge gets that one level of Vengeansaur. I think if they continue to leave this lane open, you would even consider getting Vengeansaur at level 3 there uh, rather than an extra level in your stun. We do have Kuro coming into this mid lane, missing out on a stun there on Hani, but nothing was really going to come of it one way or the other. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't used a smoke gank yet on Hani. Maybe they're just playing it a little bit safer. They just want to be pressuring the bottom tower. You see, they're pressuring Hani or pressuring the bottom tower. But I guess the one good thing that they have against the Centaur is a Huskar. I, I feel like this hero is one of the best heroes for dealing with it, just mm -hmm. so anybody can leave the lane, and Huskar will do absolutely fine against Centaur, I feel. Oh, yeah. I mean, once he gets those high levels of uh, Berserker's blood and he has that life break, you're talking about a huge amount of damage, and then you're not taking anything in return because, uh, really, Centaur's putting out mostly magic damage. So, yeah, you know, that's not going to be a big issue for him. Is so uh, this 1v1 matchup might just turn into a 2v1. Is Fly's kind of hovering around this, uh, this area, probably just making sure there isn't that rotation of the two supports that we expected to see um, so early on. And sure enough, Puppy is going to be going for the aura nice and early adding in that bit of extra damage to help them take the tower all the quicker. And it doesn't look like uh, Trixie's going to be here in time this time around. Dyer's so the tower should tower fall. They will be able to commit to it. Train Protector's going to grab a double damage rune, and he's going to head his way over to middle lane. If he actually gets behind Ho Hobost here, that's going to be a quick, easy kill. Fly's going to be forced Dyer's away. Now they go on middle. Hobost's going to get caught out, and the Leech Seed plus the gigantic right clicks. Good God. But it's still not enough. That was a great Gus play, but uh, it still did not matter. Bottom tier one tower did fall in exchange for that little bit of action, but uh, probably not worth it, especially since they still have yet to shut down Hani's Dusa. That being said, I, I feel like you don't really have to have that much pressure to shut down Dusa just because it takes so long for her to come online. But at least the Centaur is getting punished. They got a tower. It's kind of worth it for Navi. First blood for a tower. They'll still have a lot of push once they group up, and the oh, anti-push for Fnatic is non-existent, mm -hmm. especially with Hani. Not, he, they have zero split push, zero, except for Shadow Wave, and then you have maybe Tree Armor on the tower. Other than that, they're just going to have to dive and hope the best. So, Navi has a good lineup for taking towers, and right now, Dendi's going to be playing Greedy, and he's going to be going a Midas. I'm just worried about Funic right now. I think he needs help to deal with this Huskar. No. Yeah, he certainly does. It, maybe once they take this tier two, unfortunately, they're having to deal with living armor now. And with the three heroes there, it looks like it's not going to be possible. So maybe they can just rotate out. But uh, first, they're going to smoke up, maybe try and gank up this middle lane, as uh, we expected them to do for so long. They sure as hell can't leave Dendi alone at this bottom lane. He's a Marana, for God's sake, who is going to be going for a hand of Midas. So he's going to be getting a little bit greedy with his build. Not a big surprise, seeing as Marana is one of those heroes who needs to operate from ahead. Smoke's going to be spoiled here from Trixie. Wanders right into Kuro, gets the call. And if he can get a couple of spins, this will be his death. Stun goes out in time, though. And Trixie was unable to get another spin that could have ensured the kill on Kuro. As you can see how low he's ticking just from that one level of battle hunger. Well, we have Tranquil Boots now up on the Centaur, so I'm, I'm liking maybe Funix options because if Huskar dives, they don't have a stun, so he could just hoof stomp, hoof stomp and just run away after he life breaks, if Era uh, life breaks him. Yeah. Mid lane, let's check out the CS. They're even. They're like dead even on denies and mm -hmm. less hits, basically. And well, you took a look at uh, the Huskar and the Marana, too. The two safe lane farmers, they are dead even as well. 38 and 17, and 37 and 2. Obviously, a rather large discrepancy between the denies, but that's because Huskar is trying to keep the lane back, trying to starve out the Centaur, while Navi, they were trying to push in that lane and wanted to keep as many creeps as possible. That way, they could take these towers all the, uh, all the quicker. So that means Navi should be leading in gold while Fnatic probably had an experience and I love it when it's just perfect like 
that. A thousand gold lead for Navi in exchange for about a 1500 experience lead from uh, Fnatic. We are going to have another smoke rotation. Hopefully this one will go better than the last time as they are going to be trying to pick off the Huskar. He does have two levels of Berserker's Blood, which is going to make him rather tanky against a lot of this magic damage, but they do have the right clicks at the same time. Era will get hit by the stun. Curl falls it up. Era, nice little juke there. And maybe he can turn this around with some extra support. Here comes Fly, and he does have that shell grave. Perfect timing from him. He's now going to turn on Funic and beat his ass in. Keeps on going. Curl can't do anything about that one. As while Era is low, it's all magic damage coming out from uh, that Lina. And that could be them getting caught out. An attempt at a call to maybe try and catch out these supports as they Moonlight Shadow. Puppy could have cruise right on by Trixie. And uh, Kuro is just going to have to teleport away. So Dyer's unsuccessful gang to say the least as really they just end up losing the Centaur in the process. Yeah, they didn't pull this creep wave down here, Navi, so when they mm -hmm. first did the smoke gang middle. So Tree was able to get level 5 and now he's almost level uh, on the bottom lane. Now he's almost level 6. And he has his arcane boots, and he's stacking the jungle. So Fnatic's doing a really good job. They're up 2-0 right now, and that that gank completely failed because you're going against a Dazzle and a Tree. You need to commit more heroes, or if they had maybe a Stampede or hit the Lina stun. But he's still tanky, like you said, with the Berserker's blood. And Havos, he's going to be going for his infamous Mask of Madness, I feel. Just to flash farm. He's mm -hmm. going to be the uh, new Luna Mask of Madness, but maybe he won't. But he, he always does this, I think. Yeah, I like the idea, personally. It just, just means, like, especially if you're sitting in this mid-roll, you can just go and farm Ancients every once in a while. Honestly, Draw Ranger has enough attack damage, and with the attack speed offered to you by Mask of Madness, there's no reason you can't go in, clear out an Ancient stack every once in a while. Uh, and by, by stack, I mean just one camp. <laughs> Don't want to get too ambitious with that one. Fnatic is going to be rotating around this middle lane once again to see if they could shut out Havos. Well, no. They're going to go behind this top lane, try and catch out the Centaur. I feel this is greedy of them. Draw Ranger is squishy and easy to gank. The Centaur, he's level 6. You don't have any stuns, so if he's in a good position, he could just pop the ultimate and run away, or maybe even hit a good enough stun that will set up some good teleports. So Vost and Adi just having a back and forth little battle there of right clicks. As, uh... It's, it's the battle between damage on Drow Ranger and sustain from Hani's uh, mana shield, which he's not really Dyer's using for anything else. He didn't go for that uh, Mystic Snake, which was what I was interested Radiant's to see, top was whether or not he decided two. to go for it's it. It's going to go down. Dyer's yep. bottom gone. Tower is under attack. They finished it off, and like you Dyer's said, Fnatic have very, very fallen. little to stop this, and they Radiant's don't have the greatest split push attack. in the world. We do now have an armlet for Eras. So the one good thing that they have, they Radiant may not have the uh, are fortified. the D push, like you say, just to be able to uh, kill creeps real quickly from a distance and maybe harass Navi back. But they do have initiation now, uh, at least a little bit. They're going to have it with the axe as soon as he has blink. But for now, with the armlet up on the Huskar, he can life break pretty aggressively. And uh, thanks to a train protector and a dazzle sitting behind him, he can probably survive through, uh, through that kind of dive. I expect Navi to be getting aggressive with Centaur ulti Daya's up and Potom ulti online. One thing that they don't have accounted for is the uh, no tail being invised up, and he's got his ulti Daya's and he's got unlimited mana. Uh, so they have to be careful with that. They are going to see is, those zeros. Uh, no, Havos is going back for a Midas. That's what I was noticing. <laughs> of course. Of course. I mean, this game is played out so static. Why not go for it now? They're going to go in on Funic. Overgrowth being used as well. Era doing a nice job getting away from that stomp, and now the ultimate will be used defensively there. Both the Centaur ultimate as he's well dead. as... Yeah, he's going to take out. Jesus. That is so much damage. Battle Hunger, Burning Spears, Poison, as well as Leech Seed. We're all taking him down there towards the end. That was just an insane amount of damage over time. And now Fnatic in a good position Radiant's to be able to take this Tier 1 tower and possibly even push into Tier 2. Navi, though, they're going to split push as much as possible and uh, may, might just be Radiant's able to take this Tier fallen. 1. But as I say, that Train Protector is Dyer's already on his way. Tower is under attack. Yeah, if they win a fight, though, they can definitely take these towers fast with the healing. Uh, the healing and the arrow being... having that he has an armlet now. So they can do a lot of work getting the towers down they just have to get to them and not be on the back foot and i don't think they're going to be on the back foot and they can do roshan anytime they want once the huskar gets his helm what mm -hmm. i think they're going to be able to do it and they have a 
a dual kind of carry late game with a Huskar plus a Medusa. So I'm I'm still liking their odds for even the late game. And they're still up right now, 3-0. And then they're down one tower, though, so far. It's the only bad part. Yeah, the only thing that really makes me feel uh, kind of anxious for Fnatic is, again, just the Dedusa. And whether or not it's actually going to be Dyer's coming online in time, because attack. Na'Vi do have this kind of lineup that they super aggressive here sitting about the the 20 minute mark like once you have that blink tucker up on centaur you have all the initiation in the world you have a large amount of burst damage between your two supports and uh and then sitting in the back you just have two right clickers hell the Marana is actually going to be doing a large amount of damage look at right now look at denny's damage it is insane thanks to the basic items that he has and then on on top of that you're getting an extra 42 damage from that precision aura normally Marana is a hero that you're like eh, you're kind of poor on on physical damage going into the mid game but when you've got a trial ranger on your side it's not an issue at all yeah and fanatics think they have this uh, late game i feel so they're not pressuring right and they have two midas's on navi i'm, I'm kind of scared for fanatic even though they're up a little bit they have roshan side advantage that's why i give them a little bit of the edge still in this go ahead but now that x finally has got his blink dagger and yeah, they should be pressuring a lot more tower is under mm -hmm. attack he might get picked off Funnick if he gets too close. He, so Yeah. You know, I was I was just kind of looking for any sort of combos that they can run with the uh, Stone Gates coming out from the Dusa because I that was one of the abilities that was buffed up a number of times and is pretty powerful, but it's super, super situational. I was thinking about the fact that like maybe with the Berserker's call, forcing somebody to focus like look at the axe. You have Dusa sitting behind him, then getting those those easy stone gazes. Uh, I was expecting actually a maxed out Berserker's call here from this axe, but instead he uh, his second level, uh, his second skill build is going to be in the battle hunger first. It looks like, so I'm a little bit surprised he didn't go for that because I don't see many other ways for them to really be able to ensure stone gaze, uh, and and without that, I'm not quite sure how the Dusa is really going to help them out that much going into the mid game, but. He certainly has enough damage. Centaur ultimate going in. Moonlight Shadow as well being used. That bottom lane, Trixie, will be able to get away, though, as uh, the Living Armor came in and just ensured that Dendi could not be aggressive enough. We're going to have a Vost and Poppy doing a smoke up and rotation. And can they do Roshan? It looks like they're going to try it out here. They're two very squishy heroes, but they certainly have enough physical damage. That's for sure. To this. go back on your... They should be able to get this. But to go back on the physical damage, yeah, the physical damage from the axe when you counter Helix it gets added to the bonus damage of the Stone Gaze. Mm -hmm. But I feel that axe was nerfed in his counter Helix with the new patch because you're not going to be getting an insane amount of uh, calls. So at no, most you'll maybe get two or three during reality. a fight. Most likely you'll get two. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be that as big of a deal as it used to be. So I can understand why he wants to max out the battle hunger. Because the cooldown on battle hunger when it's reduced Radiant is pretty much... Uh, it's kind of needed. Right. But also, so is the extra second and the cooldown for Berserker's Call. <sighs> Arrow skims right by fun. Era there as they take the Tier 1 tower in middle. To uh, not much of a fight there from Na'Vi. They did not attempt to, to defend that at all. And I can't say I'm too surprised, honestly, especially with uh, how Havost is getting so greedy with his build right now. He wins the Mask Madness, now has a Hand of Midas. And I suppose when you have an Aegis, it's okay for you to be greedy like that. They're going to go in on middle. Hani going to be able to get away. Funnick holds on to the Stomp. Now we'll be able to get it. The follow-up arrow. The Stone Gaze, though, holds in. Dendi in some trouble being uh, hunted down by this axe. Leaps away, but he still has that Battle Hunger on him. Trixie has a leap in just another two seconds with the blink and the chop. Dyer's Does he have enough damage? He needs attack. a little bit extra there. And Dyer's Dendi chose to go up. Fortified. And Trixie ends up getting juked around a little bit there. So once again, Na'Vi trying going for a gank. And sure attack. enough, the Centaur is the hero that ends up falling just like the last kill that happened at that top lane. You just see how much tank ability they have. They have nothing to Dyer's really fight tower. against this. Mm -hmm. They have Shallow Grave, they got the heals, they got the tank of the Mana Shield, they've got the takeness of the Earth, of the Huskar with his top tower Berserker's Blood. Attack. Right now they're just kind of running at you. So as long as they can maybe split push the map and get these towers down before Trees heals them. But Trees healing up the top tower, that's why I'm pretty sure it hasn't gone down in this game. And... They're going to need Havost and Denny to get big. And for 
Funnick to maybe get a, a mech and a pipe this game to be standing a chance against uh, Fnatic in these team fights. Yeah, honestly, there there would just be like th this strategy from Navi where they're not really focusing on on defending too much. They're doing a lot of split pushing. This would put them so far ahead right now if it wasn't for the train protector. Like the fact that like Dendi, he actually brought down this tier three tower, uh, tower at this bottom attack. lane down to like two thirds health. But it, it was just all futile because we weren't going to see an early push coming out anytime soon that was going to be able to Dyer's take advantage of that damage. And sure enough, the, the tower is now Dyer's healed up the full. The top lane tower fallen. does go down as Avos uses Mask Madness for that one. Middle lane, Dendi's going to be held in by the overgrowth, but pops Dyer's the Moonlight Shadow immediately. They fallen. didn't even get the Radiant's deny there. Trixie does get the call on Dendi, but... They can't really do much about that. Fnatic are Dyer's just going to continue with their push at the bottom lane. While this top tower, I kind of felt a like bad Fnatic. Off. What is Fnatic yeah. doing? They lost their mid. They're going to finally TP back. Hani's yeah. going to be taking that stun. And funny, yeah, I heard a stomp from him, but it looks like he maybe didn't blink first or something. Maybe Trixie got out in time before he it blinked. landed. He blinked before the stun landed. Yeah, Hani. He's going to be stunned up there. Puppy's in some trouble. Slowed down by the leech. He should go down as Trixie now gets close enough. Arrow's going to land on Trixie, but again, he's just so damn tanky. Like that, Four of their heroes have a bajillion HP, and then you've got a Dazzle who adds in an extra bajillion. This is an insane amount of tank that uh, they, they just like Navi every single time they go for a kill, and it's why they're probably not trying to defend their towers as much, as they know they just don't have the nuking power yet. <laughs> They don't have the DPS to get through all this tank, like you're saying. So they have to split push, which they did fine. It's just that uh, Fnatic, they kind of reacted too slow, and they lost their mid-tier 1 and the tier 1 top. For tier 1 bottom, I don't think it's worth it, but it might have been the only trade that they saw that they could get because you can't stop them from split pushing. You cannot stop Na'Vi because of just the way your lineup is. Your lineup's more not for picking off your lineup's just to bulldoze over and just run at them. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this is honestly a pretty insane farming match. Like we've only had five kills in the first 20 minutes. At the same time, I'm looking at these heroes and going, "Oh Jesus, he already has this item, and now he almost has this item." Like 20 minutes in, we're already at 10k net worth for two different heroes. Both of them are on the Navi side, which is the Drow Ranger and the Marana. Both of the heroes that did pick up those really fast hand, uh, hand of Midas. But it is just insane because we aren't seeing any kills going down. It's just a farming match back and forth that we're going to get to late game here really early on. Oh, no. Ended up uh, trying to go up against the Huskar, but that's not going to work too well when you got Berserker's blood. <laughs> <laughs> Middle lane, though, they're actually going to be able to catch out Dendi here with the Overgrowth following it up. Leap away there by Dendi, trying to get some distance. The dunk doesn't do it, but he's taking down from the Poison Touch as well as the Battle Hunger. He's going to die once again. He's going to take out the damage over time. His true strong. And they do fall, but maybe they can get a return kill. Era is really far out here. And we have Havos making his way in. He's got that right-click damage. He's going to lead with the Silence. Now the follow-up stomp. Easy kill for them, especially with the minus armor. Oh, my God. The fact that he actually was attempting a teleport there and, and seemed to almost get halfway through it is just kind of insane, showing the power of living armor. That was wishful thinking. That was very, like, very uh, wishful thinking. You're, you're, you're hoping that Venge will not stun you or swap you and that maybe he would, his computer would have to die for him to do that. Or... Maybe that his Dazzle would be able to throw a global shallow grave or something. But Please. then his TP would have still gotten canceled, though. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so. Puppy, he is right next to big old daddy right now, but they're not going to be able to catch him out. Just continue the farm Radiant's game, man. Continue the farm game. It looks attack. like Kuro is going to be going for that uh, Aghanim's upgrade. Well, Navi's on the board, though. <laughs> yeah, they are, they are right. on the board. They they're are finally on the board. On the board. And uh, Swap. Honey... Yep, Hottie's in some trouble, gets swapped back, stun, Centaur still trying to teleport in, does hit the stun here, but look how tanky Hottie is, he's not taking any damage, and now Funnick in some trouble, Hottie will pop that stone gaze, and will just simply teleport away, Funnick will not be able to find the stun in time, either one in fact, as Trixie was able to hide in the side of the jungle, Habo still pushing it pretty aggressively, and they do see him with this ward. If they can catch him out here with a poison leech seed, it's going to be pretty dangerous positioning here from Habo. He's going to start going on. Era pops the manta, trying to focus on that right-click damage, but there goes the overgrowth, and now everything else, the heals and the living armor, just makes it so Era is now invulnerable. And poor Habo tries to make his first real play in the game. 
and ends up backfiring pretty heavily on him. That's only two deaths on Havos. I mean, you don't want your carry to be dying too much, but mm -hmm. sometimes you have to play big and bold. It didn't work out for him because of the supports were there. He was suspecting that they might be off somewhere else, like bottom lane, doing something since the Axe and the Dusa were bottom lane. But since they backed off, he should have known that they were going to TP somewhere or be somewhere else. And uh, when's this Roshan coming back up? We got a minute until we get to know, or like Ooh. 30 seconds, Arrow. Arrow skims right by Hani, and uh, you're right, Roshan is going to be up. I think it, it said it was a shorter Roshan, so. Should be up soon. Looks like Dendi may put one of his illusions in the pit just to be able to keep some good control. We have a Blink Dagger up now for the Tree and Protector. It's a little bit extra initiation. They already had the Axe as well as the Huskar, but any extra will certainly help. And once you have an AC for Huskar, how do they kill him? Like, he's like practically invulnerable to magic damage at that point in time. And then you've got a, just a ton of armor mixed in with the Light Steel, the heals, as well as the Living Armor. Like, how do you kill this guy? I it's, don't know. It's going to be a battle of the two carries late game going at each other. I'm going to be interested. Uh, you might as well just get out your beverages, your your wine, your cheese, whatever you want. This is going to be going on for at least another 20, 30 minutes, I feel. At least towards mm -hmm. till this next Roshan. Yeah, next Roshan will be a, a big clash there. If one team comes away from it uh, with a big advantage, we'll probably see them try and take a lot of map control, take down some towers, and they may play a little bit aggressively off of that Aegis, but I feel you're right. Um, besides whatever happens with the Roshan, oh, Dendi's going to get caught out. Poison Touch goes down. Dendi does have a significant amount of HP points, though, and uh, should be fine as he just mantas and leaps away. At the same time, Puppy is going to be trying to push in this middle Dyer's lane. Middle I feel so bad for his medallion, though. Like, he picks up a medallion on Vengeful Spirit. Makes sense all the time. Uh, mixes well with your minus armor. But at the same time, this, uh, this Huskar, so much armor that I don't think it's going to really make much of a dent. He's got 26 armor right now. Get some. So early on, Dendi. Going to be caught out once again. They may have the overgrowth follow up, but the leap away. And Trixie decides not to try and go in a little bit deeper, seeing those teleports in. And this is a big issue, is that even though they're doing little bits and pieces of damage Radiant on this tier two, it's still going to be attack. enough to take it down in the end. Radiant Whereas uh, Na'Vi, they're a little bit better at being able to burst down these towers, Dyer's but if they can't finish it, attack. Living Armor just brings it right back up. You can see Havos was going for that top tower and immediately chased away by just one teleport. Mm, living armor, can't say enough about it. Just doing a lot of work. When they did get the tier two bottom. They're just gonna back out, and neither team has a good team to be actually scouting out Roche. So Fnatic's gonna have the edge in this, and who has the edge fighting around the pit? I see you have tree that could go invisible. You have X the call. That's about it. But you have arrow to scout and centaur to with his blink mm -hmm. over the top. So I give Navi a little bit of the edge, but you still have Ahani's ulti. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of feeling the other way around be just because like Stone Gaze and then on top of that, the weave, like it, it, those are two really good abilities when somebody's trying to force a fight on you, especially if they get them in conjunction with each other. Oh God. <laughs> Like, that's just going to be an insane amount of physical damage. Like, Honey doesn't need to hit the hard at that point in time. You've got Minus Armor taken down, as well as extra damage coming out from Stone Gaze. Butterfly is going to be up soon for him, though, and uh, that means he will finally get to the point where he is hitting damn hard. And it looks like Fnatic are going to be trying out this Roche Pit now. They have the, they have the Butterfly up, too. And... Are they going to find? No, they're not going to find the courier. Are they going to find Trixie? Trixie? Maybe not. Are they going to find the Roshan? No. This is going to go down. Dendi arrow. Dendi arrow. It's not taking too long. We do have uh, <laughs> illusions being Roshan body blocked. Just buying. No tail buying time. That's all he needs is time. Is so Roshan will go down. Age is going to be picked up by the fortified. Medusa, who also grabs the butterfly at the same time. Havost is going in MKB in... Uh, in order to try and counter out that butterfly as soon as possible. Trixie does go on Havos here. Pops the blade mail, doing a good amount of damage back to him. Era will get the leap, and that means they're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Swap goes off, but it doesn't disjoin it, and that means Era will still get hit and be taken down. This just means Puppy has put himself in a terrible position in his attempt to save his ally. He will now fall. Poor little puppy cannot get away, and potentially even Kuro. Uh, Trixie doesn't keep on moving. He almost had that one. 
But in the end, not going to be enough. And all Navi can continue to do is just split push. Keep it going. Dendi right now has almost 3k gold. Uh, you take a look at that, the gold per minute. Again, just goes to show what I was talking about. If, if you feel like you don't really have a good grasp of what are high amount of net worths in, in a certain amount of time, gold per minute really helps you out there, which we were looking earlier at 580 gold per minute for the Draw Ranger. It's just in three different heroes above that 500 range. Like normally if you're sitting above 500, you're kind of stomping, but it's just both games have turned into such farm fests that uh, the carries getting damn big. <laughs> They're going to be going high ground now, and I don't know if they can stop them. Do they have, have to check the buybacks here, Cap? Because we're going to have to see this might be it for Na'Vi. They're going to get pressured really heavily. They have Aegis still up on Hani, and they can't touch her, I think. Yeah, you kill him once, and it's a, it's a tough job. Trying to go in for it twice is just going to be kind of impossible, so. Looks like, uh, and Fnatic, again, another big advantage that they have is taking the train protector away from Na'Vi. Like, normally I wouldn't be so worried, but every single bit of chip damage, every single time Hani moves up, gets one or two shots, it's just that much closer to taking the tier three tower that is unrecoverable. Like, that, that damage is gonna be there forever. And Hani just keeps on moving forward. Taking it down to half health. Navi, they gotta commit sometime soon here. Look at Hoboso! He's trying to go on Hani, he's not getting anything. Trixie now jumps in, almost being able to finish him off. Era goes in, Centaur not quite low enough. Trixie will be saved by the Shell Grave. Great play there from Fly. Oh, Fnatic, Era's just getting targeted so badly, but who cares? Hani's just doing work right now with Split Push. And Split Shot is just tearing apart all of Navi. We have some buybacks going down, but this doesn't seem to matter. They've already taken the Tier 3 tower. Looks like Fnatic may be able to get out of here. Fly. Looks like he's going to get picked off. Good silence goes down. Hani will try and do as much damage as possible. Will be able to pick off the Centaur before he loses the Aegis here. And he's oh, even getting away. Train Protector saves him oh with the Invis, and they have no vision. Radiance top tower is oh, under support attack. Support side, so of course they have no vision. And then oh the supports for Navi actually don't. They don't even have vision either. So they need a gem. Oh my goodness. Really well played there from uh, Noto, and he still has the Aegis. When is that going to be reclaimed? In a long time. Three minutes, they can still go siege as they got the tower. Ooh, they... 20 seconds, they can start this push again. They just picked up a regen, Ahani. He doesn't even have to go back to the base. And he's got his Manta. So if you thought the split push and his life points weren't significant, now they're oh so significant. Yeah, <laughs> they, they were... have... They spent such a long time trying to focus on Aaron, that team fight, and Hani was just sitting there just loving life. He was just like, I'm just going to calmly just A-click my way into your base and be hitting everybody. And he got a couple of kills, just like straight right clicks. I don't think Navi really expected that uh, amount of damage coming out from this Medusa so early on. I was expecting Havos to use his silence earlier, but he wanted to just die and buy back because he, he felt like he needed to keep on doing the DPS instead of running back to base, because then his team would have died. So it's kind of a good suicide, but in the end it wasn't worth it because Hani ended up living. And so now they're going to have to deal with two lives again, and they can't even split push. They're going to have to find a way to defend, but can they defend? I mean, this Assault Crest, all this tank is just doing a lot of work. It's just insane. It's, it's why they pick up those first two support heroes. Uh, some of the support heroes that are like so such high tier right now, hold up, Funic, just just trying to stun up Hani. Like they can't actually initiate. There's nothing they could do about this. Their melee racks will go down. And uh, there's nothing they could do about it right now. They're gonna have to try and initiate somehow. Trixie, he did do a call there, but it looks like he either didn't get the blink or mistimed it or something. Yeah, and their gly glyph is down. And that's yep. a Rex, there it goes. It's gone. Oh, he, he tanks the arrow, but who cares? Who cares? He's got all of this in the back. They don't need to get anywhere near Hani. They're going to force Na'Vi to try and initiate first. And if they don't, it's simply going to be a loss via attrition. As now, the range racks goes down as well, and Na'Vi just seemed dumbfounded. Like, they, they just aren't doing anything. They don't even like split pushing. They aren't even like trying to get gold in exchange for losing their mid racks. They just seem like at a loss of what to do up against this Fnatic lineup. They can't do anything. Marana, even though Denny just got his MKB, they need Havos with the MKB. And if Havos gets that, maybe they can deal with the, uh, the butterfly in the tank. But until then, they have no answers for this Dusa right now. The Aegis will be reclaimed.
soon. Mm -hmm. Right now, right? I yeah. It should be now. And then they can fight maybe. Or they might just go for a, try to go for a split push base race. If they actually go for a base race, yeah. they could work out. You have four ranged heroes and mm -hmm. you could maybe go for the throne. Okay, well, they, they, they got the MKB. That's, that's really what they were waiting on, I feel, is that their biggest damage healer was having a hard time just hitting Medusa. Now that you can, whoa, Zentar jumping in deep there, pops the ultimate, but gonna get caught by Trixie as he grabs two, and now Hani begins to do his work, but he's being torn up by Hobos, gets the Shallow Grave, and the Aegis is down, you're right, this bad arrow lands on Hani, and that means he will fall. Trixie trying to get an aggro onto somebody. No Tail will fall in the back now, Trixie goes down as well, Arrow's gonna be in some trouble as the swap goes off, and he's gonna get just turned around on. Kuro finally throws down the Laguna Blade, and everybody is wiped there from Fnatic. What a big turnaround from what was just like Fnatic seemingly not caring as they just waltz into the middle racks and took everything there. And then the second time around where they try and go bottom and just torn apart by the right clicks of the Drill Ranger who destroyed the Medusa in a very short amount of time. It goes to show the big difference that having a butterfly makes and the big difference of being able to counter that butterfly with an MKB. Yeah, Denny was hitting on him too, and Hani didn't get his ulti off during that fight. That's the biggest issue, mm -hmm. and um, they didn't they didn't do enough. I don't know what the axe did that fight. He just probably yeah. melted after the right clicks. After you know, after Hani died, they just all got overwhelmed by the DPS because then uh, they couldn't do anything. Really, so, it felt like he just went on the the wrong heroes. Like he grabbed um, the centaur and the Lena. Like, the, those are two of the most unimportant attack. heroes. You've got two different heroes. Very, very squishy, glass cannon-styled ranged damage dealers that tore the Medusa apart. Those are the guys you need to initiate on because you're... Uh, okay. Now. Yeah, Dendi, leap away before it. Now the swap goes off as well. Yules is going to go down, trying to hold Dendi in place a little bit longer, but not going to be able to get that kill. We do have an arrow that's going to be able to land on No Tail. Funny stuns up Trixie. Trixie going to be torn apart. The Laguna Blade goes down. Curl saves himself a little bit of time. Now Era may fall. Shellgrave goes down. Hani's trying to do what work he can. He caught a boast. A boast is going to fall. Trixie goes down as well. Couldn't get the dunk though, meaning that they should not be able to pursue. Well, actually, Trixie, he can blink forward, maybe get a battle hunger and grab one of these supports as they're so damn slow they do have tranquil boots on puppy looks like he will be able to get away Trixie though yet to blink out I'm kind of surprised he he actually wasn't able to get close enough it looks like he did blink but I don't know where he blinked to he blinked behind the creeps and the creeps were blocking him <laughs> and he didn't get the battle oh, hunger off. they needed that forcing out the buybacks that's gonna be worth it Centaur doesn't have an ulti I don't think they can chase mm -hmm. they can't chase yeah, and why not just wait till the next Roshan as well as Scotty when it's up Rohani? You said um, last time the big problem was the fact that he didn't get off Stone Gaze. Well, this time he did, and uh, Hobos was not able to turn around in time. It got caught by that Stone Gaze, and the team fight was over that moment. Hit. Oh, Rohani, he's going to be in some trouble. Trixie's coming in. He's going to try and save his ally. Goes in on Puppy, trying to grab him. Rohani does get the shell grave. He's out putting a lot of damage. There goes Hobos. He might just be able to finish him all off. Laguna Blade will do enough work to be able to finish him in the end, but Era. He's the other semi-carry doing a lot of damage. We'll be able to wipe out the rest of these heroes. And Na'Vi, going to have to back away. Dendi, looks like Radiant's he may survive here. He's immediately going to go for the split push and just try and play the mobility game. He knows that the heroes that he's most scared of have already gone down, so he's just going to try and drag attention away from this bottom set of racks, keep this push away. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get away with it. You'll yes. have to catch them out. Dendi does land the Radiant arrow. Starstorm goes down as well. He has another leap in 10 seconds. Pops the last drum charge. And now trying to keep ahead of No-Tail. If he gets the lead seed, though, Dendi will now fall. He's going to take out from that one. A thousand gold Radiant's going the way of No-Tail. And now attack. Era about ready to go uphill. Up against the Centaur should not be a problem Radiant's whatsoever. Has Dendi fallen. has buyback. He should be buying back. No. They should have, they should have had attack. Dendi buy back at the same time as Lena mm -hmm. when Lena came up. And then, well, they don't need to waste the buyback yet. Because it's still a 2, it's a 3v3 right now. And they should, no, they're going to die if oh. they don't buy back on Dendi. Era's going to turn around here. He does have, yep, he's going to jump in on Funic. Funic's going to go down, swap. But the Yule Scepter immediately goes out from No-Tail. Great play. He try to get close enough. They will finish off Funic. And now slows up Kuro as well. Leech Seed getting Era in range. He does have another Laguna play turn around on Fly. Says back the hell off. Puppy, though, from his swap that he did earlier, is in some serious trouble. He will go down. Arrow does land on Era, But can they really go into Hani like this? 
they need to wait for this Drow Ranger. Unfortunately, they don't have that big centaur. That was supposed to be that sort of uh, tank in the front, initiating and holding back a lot of the Fnatic members. But now they're just left with three very squishy heroes Radiant's that Trixie gets and good initiation on one of them. Uh, that should be a second set of racks. There it is. He jumps in on Havos and turning on the blade mail. Going to be able to do a good amount of damage there. And Havos just gets torn apart, dunked on. Kuro's going to be next. And Havos calls the GG. This is definitely over. They already lost the Drow Ranger. Dendi's going to go down at the very end. And Fnatic just take control of the base. Very, despite the fact of the lack of kills for the first, like, 25 minutes of the game, that was rather a, a, a very, very action-packed finish as uh, we had a ton of kills going down and felt really, really close. It was...